Hi, everyone. We'll take just a minute for more people to get signed on here. Alrighty. Okay, I think we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome, everybody. My name is Riley. Uh, welcome to Hawk Mountain Sanctuary Storytime. Today's program is about the story Hawk Rising, which I'm really excited to read to you guys today. So we're so happy you're here. If you're happy too, can you dance like your favorite animal? At Hawk Mountain, we love nature, we love the birds, we love all the raptors and all wildlife. We love plants and animals, the earth and the sky, because all living things are connected. Do you love nature too? So today we have that really exciting book, Hawk Rising, that we're going to be reading today. After that, we're going to learn a little bit more about the hawk that we will learn about in our story. We also will have the chance to meet one of my favorite feathered co-workers. Um, live up close and personal. So I'm excited to share that with you. And then we are going to wrap up the program today with a really easy activity that you can create at home with just a few simple materials. Just a friendly reminder that this program is being recorded. So that way you can watch this video again, if you'd like on Hawk Mountain's YouTube channel. And also if at any time you have a question during the program, if you look at the bottom of your screen, there's a Q&A button. Feel free to click on that and type in a question if you have um, something you'd like to ask me and I would be happy to answer it. Okay, let's grab our book here and we will get started. So Hawk Rising by Maria Gian Ferrari. So the story Hawk Rising, it's about a mom and a daughter who are observing a pair of hawks through their window. And they're gonna watch them fly, hunt, care for their babies. And yeah, we'll see what happens. So this is our hawk family. It says, father hawk stretches wide his wings. So this is the father, this is the mom hawk, and there are the fledglings. You stretch your arms as Mars rises red in the sky. High in a backyard cedar, they sit. High from the window, you watch. So there's a mom and a daughter. And I think they're seeing that family of hawks we just saw outside their window. Chicks jostle, screech, beaks open wide, waiting for breakfast. Mother hawk stays, father hawk perch hunts from a pole, silhouetted. As sunbeams scratch the sky, red streaks spread. Black talons curving onto wood. Hooked beak, sharp as a knife. Head turning, eyes searching, chicks waiting. So you can see the Father hawk looking for food. The sun is rising, a beautiful sunrise. You noticing. Sunbathing warms father hawk's outstretched wings. Drying drops of dew. From the pole, his sharp eyes spy a chipmunk. Let's see what happens with the chipmunk. He dives, feet first, wings arced, fast to the grass. But chipmunk scurries under the neighbor's porch. So you can see the chipmunk. And those are his sharp talons. The chipmunk got out just in the nick of time. Father Hawk shakes his wings and springs into the sky. Kier, kier, he calls, circling, seeking prey. 
He rides the wind like a wave, twisting and turning, kiting and floating. So you can see his beautiful feathers. He has white ones in here, some brown on its midsection and these beautiful red tail feathers. And the word kiting, we'll talk a little bit more about after our story ends. Chicks waiting, you watching. So they have a pair of binoculars here. And all the way up in the sky is our hawk flying above, looking for food. Caw, caw, caw. Crows charge and chase, darting and diving, driving father hawk from their roost. So it looks like he got a little too close to a roost of crows. So they kicked them out of there. He sails on the current far from the crows and lights on a limb to perch hunt again. Father Hawk's eyes sweep the lawn. Back and forth they scan, greening grass for prey. Sparrows sit and flit in the bushes. He leans, then dives. There's Father Hawk on the lookout for some sparrows. Let's see if he catches them. Crashing, talons thrashing in branches. Once, twice, then again, and again. Shielded by bramble, sparrows are safe. So this is Father Hawk's second attempt and he still can't find food. The sparrows got out just in time. Father Hawk takes to the sky, riding and gliding. Such beautiful feathers. Shadows casting, chicks waiting, you watching. You can see the shadow here of the hawk in the sky. And this mom and daughter have been watching the hawks all day. Father hawk lands on a light pole. Dandelions ripple, oaks tremble. Father hawk perches and searches. Sun sinking, daylight blinking. Chicks waiting, you fading. Father Hawk spots a squirrel scurrying toward a tree. He parachutes, legs tipping, talons gripping. And there's our squirrel. But then back here in the shadows, you can see those sharp talons again. Over there it says, and grabbing. So it looks like he found some food for his family. Father Hawk flies into the navy blue sky. And you can see he's carrying something in his talons. Back in the nest, he lands. Chicks screech and jostle, beaks wide open, no longer waiting. You yawning. So up here, you can see the hawk's nest and down below is the house. And it's getting late. We had a long day with our hawk family. Through the night, safe in your nest, you and the hawk family sleep. So hawks and humans sleep at the same time of day. until Mars rises red in the sky again. 
So there's our mom and daughter keeping a lookout on their family of hawks that live nearby. Here's our final picture. All right, so there we go. That was our story, Hawk Rising. I love this book. I think the pictures are so beautiful. So now that we read our book, Hawk Rising, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the hawk that we learned about in today's story. Does anyone know what type of hawk this is? I'll give you a hint. It's a red-tailed hawk. And a red-tailed hawk is actually pretty common here in Pennsylvania where Hawk Mountain Sanctuary is, but also all throughout the United States. So you might've seen a hawk, a red-tailed hawk before, maybe on a light pole or nestled in a tree somewhere. So let's talk about some things we learned about red-tailed hawks in our story. So red-tailed hawks have something called adaptations or um, it could be a physical trait, like a body part or a behavior, something that they do to help them to survive in the wild. So these adaptations make red-tailed hawks, which are called birds of prey, a little bit different from the birds you would maybe see at your bird feeder or like a penguin you would see at the zoo. They have different qualities that make them uniquely birds of prey. So we're gonna talk about what those are. So the first one is red-tailed hawks have amazing eyesight. They can fly really high in the air like the pictures in our story and hunt for animals on the ground from hundreds of feet up in the air. And I actually have a red-tailed hawk skull. Now this is just a model, but you can see the head's pretty small, right? But you can see these large eye sockets and it's almost the size of my eye, but their head is way smaller. So their eyes are huge. It lets in lots of light so they can really zone in on the food that they're hunting for. Also, when they're flying in the air, they do something called kiting, which we heard that word in our story today. And what that means is that red-tailed hawks will go in the air and they'll kind of go against the wind. So it almost looks like they're flying totally still, just like floating in midair. But they're actually kind of steadying themselves, using the wind to get nice and sturdy so they can focus better on an animal they're trying to hunt. And they'll like lower their feathers a little bit to help them see. It's really cool to watch. We also learn from the book that red-tailed hawks hunt with their feet. So they'll catch prey with their feet, they'll squeeze their prey, they'll kill their prey with their feet, and they will carry them with their feet. So here I have a real life red-tailed hawk foot, and you can see those talons are impressive. They are very sharp. Check those out. And that's what they use to hunt for food. They attack feet first. Let's see what else we learned from the book. Okay, so the last thing that we know about red-tailed hawks, one of these adaptations, is that they have a hard, hook-shaped, sharp beak. So I'll show you the skull again so you can take a look at that rounded, hook-shaped beak, nice and pointy. <clears throat> red-tailed hawks use this kind of like a fork and knife to be able to pick apart the food that they're eating. And all birds have different shaped beaks depending on what they like to eat. So maybe a bird that you would see at your bird feeder that is cracking into shells or seeds or nuts will have a thick beak that can be really hard and press down and crack nuts or shells. Um, so beaks are always different depending on what the bird is eating. All right. And speaking of eating, what are red-tailed hawks usually eating? Hmm. They like to eat mice, rabbits, uh, chipmunks, squirrels, like we learned in our story. They will even eat smaller birds and sometimes even snakes, frogs, insects. 
red-tailed hawks are considered generalists, which means that they're not picky eaters. They'll eat whatever they can find in their environment. So that's a really interesting fact about red-tailed hawks. And I'm wondering, are you a picky eater? Okay, so let's see. You also might remember from the book, and this is our last thing we learned from the book, that the mom and the daughter woke up in the morning, they watched the hawks all throughout the day, hunting and flying around. And then at night when they went to bed, so did the family of hawks. Because red-tailed hawks are most active during the daytime, they're called diurnal, which means that they're active during the day and they sleep at night. The opposite of that would be an animal that is active at night, but sleeps during the day. So an example of that would be maybe an owl. And the word for that, the opposite of diurnal is nocturnal. So we have diurnal birds and nocturnal birds. Okay, so now that we've gone over what we know about a red-tailed hawk, I'm going to bring out a very special feathered coworker of mine that I love who has some of these adaptations that I'd like to show you up close and personal. So I'm gonna go grab her and I'll be right back. All right, she had a, a late start this morning. She was sleeping in, so it took her a minute, but here we have one of my feathered coworkers. So based off the story, the pictures you saw today in our book, you might be able to guess that this is a red-tailed hawk. And I'll try and turn her around a little bit so you can see. She has red tail feathers and they kind of look like a really dark brick red right now. And it was a little rainy last night, so they look a little bit darker, but red tailed hawks, uh, surprisingly, they actually <clears throat> don't grow their red tail feathers until they're a full grown adult at about two years old. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about her tail feathers in a minute, but you can see all the adaptations that we talked about up close and personal. So we have those sharp talons, which is why I'm wearing a really thick leather glove to protect my arm. We also have her sharp hook shaped beak. You can also see her large eye. She has incredible eyesight. And she's just looking around, getting comfortable. Um, so it's really cool to see those adaptations from the story up close and personal. 
And if you have any questions about our Red Tail Talk, feel free to ask me in the Q&A section of our Zoom window here. Um, in the meantime, I'll tell you a little bit more about how we got her here at Hawk Mountain Sanctuary. So <clears throat> this red-tailed hawk we got in 2015. Um, and when we got her in 2015, she was just starting to get her red tail feathers like I was just talking about. So that means she was probably about two years old when we got her in 2015. So now that it's 2021, we know that she's about seven years old. And what happened was, if you see the wing closest to me, her right wing, it's a little bit droopier than her other wing. She was actually hit by a car and she was brought to a rehab facility and they took care of her, made sure she was healthy. But they said, you know, this bird, we can't release this bird back into the wild because she can't fly at 100%. If we were to release her, she wouldn't be able to fly or hunt for the food that she needs. So instead, she becomes an education ambassador. So she comes to a place like Hawk Mountain and we take care of her, we feed her every day, we um, get her comfortable working with us and she's really familiar with me. And then we show her off at programs and people like you get to meet her up close. So it's a really awesome experience and she loves it here. She gets her favorite foods and she gets to live in a large um, outdoor enclosure that she's safe in. So yeah, that's a little bit of history of how we got her. You know, I think she's looking down at the book Hawk Rising because there's a picture of a hawk on it. <laughs> she was just staring at it for a few minutes. So yeah, this is our red-tailed hawk. I'll give you a few minutes if you have any questions about her. And it's just beautiful to watch her. And you can see her feathers on the outside are like a dark brown color, but on the inside, it's more of like a cream white color. And another way to identify a red-tailed hawk if you're outside, maybe seeing one in the wild, is if you look across her belly, she has some speckled brown feathers. We call that her belly band. Um, and that's a way that we can identify a red-tailed hawk out in the wild. Because sometimes it's hard if you're, if you're on the ground looking up at a red-tailed hawk flying around, you can't always see the red tail feathers, which would be a giveaway, right? Um, so that's just one more way. It's called a field mark to be able to look at the bird and figure out what type of hawk you're looking at. And there are a few different hawks that live near Hawk Mountain. We have broadwing hawks, um, rough-legged hawks, red-shouldered hawks, and we also have different types of birds of prey like falcons, eagles, things like that. All right. I think I'm going to go put her back in her carrier in her taxi and um, we'll talk about our hawk themed activity and then we will wrap up for today. So I'll be back in just one second. We can say goodbye to our red tailed hawk. See you later. All righty. Okay, thank you so much for your patience. So last but not least, we have a very exciting craft I would like to show you today. So in the email you got today with the link to this uh, Zoom meeting, there was also a link to a picture of a red-tailed hawk that you can print out and color and cut out for today's activity. So the picture that you'll print out will look like this and you can see there's the hawk body, and two wings. And the only things that you will need for this activity is this picture, something to color with, something to cut with. <clears throat> and you'll also need 
this interesting tool here. And this is called, some people call it a brass fastener, a metal fastener. And what we're going to do with it is once we color our picture and cut it out, do you notice these three circles? One, two, and three. You're going to put them all together, push this fastener through, and then spread it open like this. And that way, you're going to create a red tailed hawk with wings that can move. So I'll show you a finished product. Here's my red tailed hawk. So there's the body, and I have the belly band that we talked about, the red tail feathers, the yellow foot with the sharp black talons. And then I have the front wing and the back wing. And by pressing this metal piece through and spreading it out in the back, you're able to move the wings around. Pretty cool, huh? And you can see the outer wing has dark feathers. The inside of the wing has those lighter feathers we talked about. We have the sharp beak. So there's our red-tailed hawk. So you can create this exact hawk at home. You can color it like the red-tailed hawk we met in person or in our story, or you can color it however you'd like. And you can cut it out, use one of these fasteners. But if you don't have one, you could also just staple it together and have the wings in a position that you like best, make it look like he's dancing. So that is our red-tailed hawk activity. So definitely go take a look at your email and find that link to print out your own red-tailed hawk that you can color. And I believe that is it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's activities and I'm so happy you got a chance to meet my favorite feathered coworker. So in our next sanctuary story time, it is also on a Thursday at 11 a.m. It's April 22nd. And for that sanctuary story time, we'll be reading the story, Forest Bright, Forest Night. You can register for all of our virtual programs at hawkmountain.ticketleap.com. I also forgot to mention, if you love the story Hawk Rising as much as I did, we actually sell this in our bookstore. So if you live locally near Hawk Mountain Sanctuary, you can come to our bookstore and get this book and bring it home. All right. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you had a great time. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye, everyone.